My name is Joe Woodham from Tory. Welcome to our vlog series on all things design. Today, uh, joining me is Melbourne-based design leader Grant Show. Grant is the mastermind behind last year's highly acclaimed Design Outlook Conference, which was a huge success. Grant has a re remarkable career that includes leading design teams for well-known brands like Deloitte, Autodesk, Australia Post, Cisco, and most recently, Frog Australia. Grant has earned a reputation as a true design leader. Grant, it's a pleasure to speak to you today. How are you? Good, thanks, Joe. How are you? Very well, thank you. Enjoying the warmth of Bali. So We have a very, very grey and miserable day here in Melbourne. I don't miss the weather at all. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back soon. I'll be back for uh, Design Outlook, which I'm looking forward to. But uh, that's that's what today's discussion's about. Um, look, thankfully, you reached out to me back in 2021 when you had the idea for Design Outlook. So first of all, thank you for the opportunity to, I guess, watch your idea come to life. And hopefully I helped somewhat. But today I wanted to find out what was the actual inspiration behind Design Outlook? Like, how did you come up with the idea and, and what brought it on? That's right. You were one of the first sort of co-conspirators co at the start of it to, to to get involved. I think the the inspiration it initially wasn't actually to create a design conference or a design festival. I was sort of just tapping into my, what I call designerly anxiety about, you know, the state of design in Australia and how it was maturing and how the pandemic kind of happened at the worst time for design in Australia in that design should be coming together and collaborating and working to, to, create a, a better industry and, and a more sustainable design industry. Um, and instead, we were all locked in our bedrooms to think about what we'd done for, for three years. And so I started talking with you and some other design leaders that I knew about, ultimately just a, a, a meetup about design and design leadership and where it was going. And there was such an overwhelming response at the time that it very quickly became a, a conference day and some workshops. And there was enough momentum that we also decided to sort of try and jumpstart the design industry by creating the festival aspect, which is the sort of free to access open houses, meetups that are along the uh, the week as well. Yeah, there was a lot of work that went into getting it all up and running. But I, I imagine there was tons of challenges along the way. What was some of the biggest challenges about starting or coming up with the idea and then implementing it with having a new festival conference? I think like any idea that's new, you just get naturally a lot of resistance to it. So although I said before that there's a lot of support for the, the idea, when it came to trying to get presenters and sponsors and, and moving tickets, there were sort of people going, well, what's the value proposition and, and what is it and why? And I'm not quite sure Australia needs a design conference. And so getting a lot of resistance to, to some of those things, then attending, you know, we'll go, well, okay, well, actually that was, that was great. And we definitely do need this as well, but kind of funny, funny resistance that comes with a new idea, I suppose, where people just don't quite get it because it's new and it hasn't been a thing yet. It hasn't been, you know, brought into the world. Yeah. Not off the back of that then, like, with the success of Design Outlook 2022, at the end of it, looking back on how everything went, what was some of the proudest moments along that journey? I had a couple of I had a couple of moments actually. When the conference started, the conference day. Um, actually, I'll, I'll start with the first event. The very first event was at City Lab with the team from City of Melbourne. And I was terrified that no one would turn up. I have this sort of fear of no one ever coming to parties that I organize. As a kid having a birthday, they always fell in the school holidays. But 50 people, I think, or something like that turned up to the first event. And I was like, oh, okay, this is this is really great. So, you know, that people are turning up at lunchtime to, to go to some of these events. Another moment was when the conference started, I actually was like, oh my gosh, what have I done? No one's going to like this. And I actually had to go for a walk around the block and I missed most of, of an opening keynote because I just had to like calm my nerves a little bit because I was so hoping that people would like it. 
And then in the afternoon, as you know, I relaxed a little bit and we were on time and things were going well. A dear friend of mine, Oliver, was on stage presenting about his leadership journey. And so I was actually quite touched at that point watching him and and sharing his journey I was actually brought to sort of to tears and I tried to rush down into the green room to sort of have an an overwhelmed cry downstairs but then everyone was down there and everyone saw me and made it made it worse as well but I was sort of just quite happy with how everything went seeing Ollie in his presentation and just what we were able to achieve on the day it was just just fantastic it was incredible and I think it was it was a very well times conference. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but like just the energy from everyone that attended. I like as you got there, everyone is seeing a team that they've never actually met in person. It was hugging and it just it was, yeah, it was a really good energy in the room for the whole conference, which was super cool. Like it was that's kind of what made it for me, along with obviously all of the uh, the great talks and stuff like that. But um I think more to the point. Design Outlook 2023 is coming up in May. I want to talk through why why someone wants to go to Design Outlook. What's in store? What's going to be the Yeah, cool- I guess one of the double-edged swords of creating a conference or a brand like Design Outlook is, you know, you we create this big, bold experience that we need to sustain year on year. Otherwise, it'll it'll sort of fade into people's memories pretty quickly and so this year we're exploring creativity and really rediscovering creativity and where that comes from is um you know my my design anxiety is is picking up again and i've been thinking about how orchestrated design is and how planned and structured and machine design is within processes in organizations and i think designs become quite boring Actually, it's sort of very repetitive, the same kind of artifacts, the same kind of, you know, user interview into insight into progressive or improvement, incremental improvement. And that's not how I work as a designer. That's not how I work on design outlook and, and coming up with the ideas. There's lots of interjections and creating stuff and getting lots of bad ideas out and 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 getting them out early, hopefully. And so I've been thinking a lot about you know, the current mood of design and feeling like maybe we aren't as creative as as we could be. And so how do we sort of swing that pendulum back to find moments of creativity, find fun in design again, and, and kind of thinking about some of the opposites. So I think about, you know, the this desire for deductive business. So where's the data? Where's the insight? How do we know this is true? And the opposite of that is is kind of what designers are best at, which is sort of abductive design, which is a little bit of intuition, a little bit of love, a little bit of hope, a little bit of fear, and trying something new. And that that that's quite challenging to many businesses. So I want to, you know, discuss that for the day. And those are the presentations that that we've got lined up, some really fantastic thought leaders on creativity and 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 how we can find those moments of creativity again in, in work and feel like designers again a little bit. You mentioned one of the challenges with starting Design Outlook was the resistance and, and getting people to align their brand with your brand and getting speakers. What's it been like getting speakers this year round? This has pretty been pretty easy. One of the things that we pride ourselves on last year last year and in general is the diversity of our cohort so age gender ethnicity background in terms of experience and where they come from and last year we had really really wonderful cohort that was incredibly diverse Uh, and this year we we feel that we've achieved the same thing again but it's very difficult to find that diverse set of thinking and so the you know the the process of selecting and, and curating the 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 cohort has been really great but at the same time when we reach out to people they want to know just a little bit more what what's it about and how does it work but thankfully we have last year as a case study that we can show them and we show the the whole process and that means we've been able to get some really really outstanding presenters in chi ryan our keynote presenter who's currently doing her phd in exploring creativity and design we have Roya Azadi, who wrote a book on creativity and how to be creative. We have two people that I've admired for a very long time in Barbara Doran and 
Roger Watson, who just wrote a book on rediscovering creativity themselves around, it's called Creative Reboot. And it's sort of subverting the human-centered design process in terms of, you know, instead of writing insights from research, you write haiku poetry and some other ideas that sort of force you to be creative. And so having our theme of rediscover creativity and then being able to go out and, and, and take that around to people, we found them, one, throwing themselves into it, uh, and two, you know, it sort of reinforced the theme that we have this year, that there's a lot of energy around rediscovering creativity and design and, and, and what creativity means for, for the future as well, right? It's creativity is synonymous with innovation, with change, with adaptability. So it's not necessarily creativity and the wildness of the design, but, you know, how innovative and how much change we can push forward in the solutions that we're creating as well. Yeah. Now, obviously, with the theme rediscovering creativity is this just for designers like or is this conference applicable to anyone that works in a product team i mean i think it's involved to anyone that's doing any form of problem solving or any form of innovation that that you know the ideas that are in here are actually relevant to you know from ceo down to mailroom i actually think it's highly relevant yeah excellent so obviously we're booked in for may with the conference like what what happens from here? Like, uh, where's best for people to go to find tickets? Do they get them through their business? Like, get them through the company or personal? Yeah, well, I mean, ideally, ideally, that's right. You're in you're in an organization that can that can help you get to the conference. But you can you can head to designoutlook.com.au to check out the program, check out the festival aspects, and get tickets there. Several of our partners are offering discount codes as well. So if you go and um, like, follow, subscribe partners, you'll see discount codes throughout there. If you're a student, we have student tickets. And then just today we put up our, what we're calling a helping hand tickets. We know the industry is in a bit of state of flux at the moment and not everyone can afford to, to buy a full price ticket. And so we have sort of name your own price tickets, a limited number of name your own price tickets there as well. Really cool. Well, last year, I sent 10 of our designers along and they all loved it. So uh, we'll be definitely doing the same this year. Uh, I can't wait for the conference. I got so much value out of the last years. So to all the designers that we sent. So really looking forward to it. Um, what, what's some closing words to, uh, I guess, motivate people to take a bit of action and buy some tickets now? <laughs> I guess just thinking about the team that puts it on, we're a small team of people that love design. We're not a big event company and this isn't a huge money-making enterprise. We're doing this for our love of design. So come along and really support the industry more than than anything is, is what I would encourage. Um, we put a lot of effort into it. We've got about 20 volunteers behind the scenes that are working to to put this on. And and your attendance really supports them and shows shows the love for them as well. Great. It's it's been a pleasure catching up today. Like I'm I'm very excited for Design Outlook 2023. I can't wait for it. So I look forward to seeing you in person then. Yeah, likewise, Joe. Can't wait. Excellent. Thanks.